Damok, and Jalad at Tanagra. Shaka, when the walls fell. Now, if you are got your quota of oldness and geekiness, then you'll recognise two lines from a classic Star Trek The Next Generation episode, Darmok. The episode features where the universal translator that the Federation has did not work. It's an interesting episode. It's quite well done. It's a good Star Trek TNG episode. Quite a famous one. But they only did that once, to my memory. There might be another one out there. Who knows? I don't have that much geekness and oldness. But that is the topic of today. Weird languages in your RPGs. And why I hate them. I hate the way they're normally used. They are often used as a gateway to role-playing. To interact with this NPC, you must speak their language. Now, I come from old-school RPGs, so a lot of things get randomly rolled up, including languages. And if I get arbitrarily assigned X languages, and those don't match the language of whatever NPC you've brought in, then no role-playing for me. I've come to your table... I'm rocking someone who wants to talk with the with the with the NPCs, with the emissaries, with whoever we're going to meet. And because I don't speak Draconian or Goblin or Hyankoi or whatever other strange language outlandish language you've picked for them, I get to sit there and go, Well, this is fun. I wonder what I'm gonna do. Mm. They're definitely talking this session, but I don't get to talk because I don't speak the arbitrary language. Fuck that noise! <laughs> That's what I hate about that. That can just happen arbitrarily. The GM's brought up this wonderful plot where you're going to speak with the insect people, and he knows that some of the characters speak insect. Insect people. And he thought that would be fun... But it's not fun for the rest, rest of the players because everyone else gets to sit there and twiddle their thumbs while the, while the people who can talk, insect people, get to do the role playing. Bugger. <laughs> so it's done that way. It can be done innocently. But I've also seen it used as an actual gatekeeper. You've got a face character, Andrew's got a face character. Jim Brian prefer to play with Andrew and not you, or you and not Andrew. And looking at the languages you've got, uses them as a gateway to who gets through the role play today with the NPCs. If you speak Centaur and Andrew doesn't, then if the Centaurs rock up, and it's the entire the entire night's going to be with the Centaurs then Andrew doesn't get to talk much because he don't speak Centaur. His character does not speak Centaur. Um, well, they may as well not turn up. <laughs> they may as well go home. And so, in contrast to this, I prefer to do it the other way. Everyone speaks a common language. That's why it's fucking called common. The demons and the angels speak all the tongues of men, so all your weird, ain't interplanar, weirdo, extra-dimensional creatures, they're either psionic or they speak all the tongues of men, so they can communicate with you. And everyone else basically has a common language. But everyone does like, and does get along, and does communicate ideas better in their own language. So if you speak the language of the centaurs, of the lizard people of the goblins, then you can get a bonus to interacting with them. And that's the difference. You're not gatekeepered out. You get a bonus for having that skill, for having that extra ability. Everyone gets the role play. Everyone gets to speak. But the person who has chosen 
the skill or the ability or the attribute of speak of this thing gets a bonus, gets an improvement, has an advantage over the other players. They still get to showcase their abilities, just like they would in most standard systems, but no one gets locked out. And that's how I like to do languages. You can eventually communicate with everyone, but you communicate a lot better if you can speak their language. Thank you.